We'll begin this morning with a look at the headlines. In our newspaper review, we call it Off the Press. And to help us make sense of what's beyond the headline, we have uh, Libora Soshoma. He's a legal practitioner. Pleasure to have you in our studios once again. Good morning. My pleasure. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. We're kicking off with stories from the Punch newspapers this morning. Uh, the, uh, the Nation, I beg your pardon, newspapers. The major one that you can see there is talking COVID-19. There's fears of, uh, about, uh, of course, a resurgence and a second wave. Uh, it says here, yeah, states take tough stands amid COVID-19 spike. Uh, it says here, yeah, 2,875 tests positive in 72 hours. Second wave, more deadly, NMA warns. Also, NJC asks Uyutala to sack Oshun George. 42 microfinance banks lose licenses. And also, Nigerian stocks make 1.3 trillion naira gain. Uh, others that we can find on the nation newspapers this morning. Uh, telecom firms unveil short codes to link NIN. And why Buhari accepted to reopen uh, Nigeria's borders. It also says a uh, need to save private sector and respect agreements. Uh, one or two others, troops foil abduction of 84 girls in Katsina. It's one of the things that we'll be talking about later on the program this morning. And um, we also can find here, no rift with Toyotala, says uh, Arik Bishola. Um, All right. Um, I guess those are, I'll, let me just say up front before we even uh, get um, Mr. Boris in is the fact that they've made it easier for us to get the name just to link yes. our numbers. So that is uh, kudos to the telecoms um, giants. Over to you now, sir. Yeah, because um, uh, the uh, telecom companies, as we speak, are losing money daily. They can't register SIM, SIM cards. It is you buy a SIM card, even if the SIM card is free, it is when you make calls, yes. you know, that they make money. And so, just imagine the numbers of people who probably would have bought SIM card. I wanted to buy a SIM card just last week. Mm. And they said I couldn't buy any SIM card. So the telecom companies are losing money. And so they had to come up with ideas. It's like the government just, you know, came up with um, name registration without an idea of how to go about it. Uh, linking your sorry, linking your numbers with name without an idea of how to go about it. You, you, the question you now ask yourself is, when we did this name registration, because I've done mine, they ask you for your phone number, you put it there. They collect your biometrics. You did, you bought SIM card, they ask you for your phone number, your biometrics. You do international passport, they ask you for your biometrics. You're doing, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, bank, bank verification. They ask for your biometrics. And then you begin to wonder, why is it so difficult for the government link to link all of these that you still had to put you know, your citizens through you know, the hardship of having to go queue up somewhere? The only answer I can get is that you have people bereft of ideas. That was how they came with SIM card registration that was going to curb kidnapping. And that once your SIM card is registered, your biometrics are there, it will be easy to track anybody. And yet, yes, people still now. kidnap and they, use, they make phone calls. And rather than, you know, clamp on them, we we'll negotiate with them. That is why it takes me to the next story. Yeah, that absolutely. kidnapping in Katsina, it's now like a, a market free for all. You know, I, I said something when the boys were released. We're happy that they were released. But... What we should be uh, um, thinking of or talking about is why were they kidnapped? How were they kidnapped in the first place? Thank God we foiled another attempt in Casina. Only God knows, you know, how many of such More. attempts. There's also 35 that, that were reportedly kidnapped in the Damatu Road. Okay. The Midway Road. You know, so in all of this, you, you begin to ask yourself the question. It shows either lack of capacity or that is a booming business that people, you know, Rather, will look the other way because when you negotiate ransom, you know, something definitely must get to them. If you remember, there was a time that, you know, even in the South here, you hear, oh, no ransom was paid. Only for the victims later to say, well, ransom was paid. But we were asked, you know, to say that no ransom was paid. So this, 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 is, um, this is frightening. And lastly, also on this, now we have opened four borders. The question is, what led to the closure of the borders? Have we taken care of all of those smuggling? 
what mechanism have we put in place? What structures have we put in place to foster, you know, those things that led to the closure of the borders for, you know, a year plus? And, and, and I really do not see anything. I don't see any. Is this, once again, um, another example of uh, government taking steps without properly thinking things through? It was always, yes, it always takes steps, and then they give you bogus reasons why they need to take those steps. And yet, you find out that after taking the step, that's when they begin to run around for solutions on how to fix that problem that made them take that drastic measures. We fix, we close borders, and Nigerian got used to closing borders. Even though a lot of people's businesses collapse, nobody is talking about the 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 data of those whose business, you know, was across land borders. And we're talking about oh, the the sea uh, and um, air. But now that we have reopened them, we are forced to reopen them in the midst of second spike of COVID nineteen. What have we put in place to ensure that what led to the closure of the borders? Even we are, our borders were closed and boys were being kidnapped and taken through the borders. An American was kidnapped and, uh, in uh, Niger and taken through that same closed borders. So uh, it, it, it's, it's laughable. Yeah, let, let, let's uh, see what's in the punch now. Same thing, uh, states plan tough enforcement as new COVID-19 cases surge. Uh, before we go further, let me ask for like, what kind of measures do you think they would take? Because as it stands, the Lagos State Governor has said um, the state cannot afford a total lockdown anymore. So what tough measures do you think that the government can be taking at this time to actually, you know, remain the spread of the virus? You, you see, um, in the first place, the first lockdown, what did we achieve with it? That's the first question. What did we achieve with the first lockdown? You know, it was as if, if, even if you look at the papers, the photographs you see are that of America and the UK, not even Nigeria. You know, these are serious-minded countries. When you talk about lockdown, they know what they are doing. Because they, they understand. We have also not understand um, the, the impact or effect of COVID-19. There are, it is, it is clear that we are biologically at an advantage than you know america and europe and so we also do not well either we understand but we are so much interested in the funds or we do not understand that advantage and so we really had not taken advantage of it and so that's why anytime there's a lockdown in america and uk we hurriedly you know we'll be discussing lockdown and then only god knows the numbers increase and then you ask yourself, how many people in your area, in your locality, has government tested? All right, let's, let's, let's look at how... Well, no, I'm coming to be. that. I'm coming to that. So because you need to understand the problem before you begin to talk about what are the tougher measures you need to put in place. Okay. So the first thing is, how much of this is a problem to us? We put measures in place, lockdown, and then even while we were at lockdown, people were still going out in their locality. The day in March, I think March 2nd, that the lockdown was eased, if you see the numbers that went to the markets, and how many of those people were tested. So what we should be doing now, for me, it is not to copy and paste. It is to understand the biological advantage we have. We still don't have, you know, the testing capacity. It is only in Lagos and Abuja that you even talk about these things. I traveled to Wiriana Baumwaha recently, and I was, I was, I was, I looked awkward wearing face masks. There, there is a, an Enugu carnival that starts today for the next, you know, couple of okay. days. Okay, they will tell you that it's only in Lagos. Even in Lagos, they will tell you it's for big men and not for poor man, because when they announce deaths, it is only you Numbers. know big names. Big names. Uh, and and we really need to understand. Once you understand that biology the biological advantage, and then the psychology of your people, that is only when you'll be able to take measures, either tough or relax. Otherwise, you'll just be copying and pasting. All right, uh, let's uh, just quickly uh, recap some of the headlines on the Punch newspaper. I, I wanted you to speak on that again. It seems to be the big one on most of the papers this morning. Um, the other headlines on the Punch newspaper uh, has the Kankara School Boys Rescue Presidency aligns with army contradicts Masari. 
Uh, we find details on page 11. What is the contradiction this time again? CBN revokes 42 microfinance banks operating licenses and FG records 1.29 trillion naira fiscal deficit in three months. Uh, I think that was captured in the nation as well. Food prices rise in household incomes precarious. That's according to the MBS. Um, more headlines for you beside that picture of social distanced. Um, I think that should be an airport on the front page. I can't quite see um, the comment underneath it. And that's the picture I'm talking about on your screen now. And beside it, you, you're looking at over 70 killed during NSARS in Lagos unclaimed. That's a sun. I'm, 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 I'm shocked to see that. I'm sure a lot of Nigerians are too. Over 70 killed during NSARS in Lagos unclaimed. We said nobody died. So who is this senior advocate that is saying um, some persons were Falano. killed? Um, you might really want to go read that story. It's on page 8 of the paper. Two arrested for gang raping, filming Ogun, 19-year-old girl. Yeah, that sounds very familiar, unfortunately. How military police rescued 80 abducted Islamic students. That's the uh, defense headquarters speaking this morning. Over to you, uh, Mr. Shoma. Yeah, um, please permit me quickly um, on this contradiction of um, who how many or the numbers that were kidnapped. If you remember, um, Masari, initially the presidency did say that only 10 boys were... Yes, yes Gabashehu said that um, his presidency, mm. uh, only 10 students were kidnapped. And Masari insisted that there were about 333 Four. still missing. Mm -hmm. And we saw the boys when they were interviewed, and they didn't look like 10 to me. Um, and then, secondly, now the presidency is aligning with, you know, the army. I, I think I see more of politics playing out here. You know, we are using human lives to play politics. We shouldn't be. You use the life of young, innocent boys and girls to play politics of kidnapping, rescue, kidnapping, rescue. Um, if, you, if that same punch newspaper, how are we rescued... Uh, 80 abduct, abducted Islamic students. So it, it's, it's, it, it's sad, really, that in a country where we boast and call ourselves the giant of Africa, that kidnapping now is the order of the day. That people, even in this Utah period, people who want to travel, you know, are scared. You will neither need to go see your pastor or see your babalao to be able to plead the blood of Jesus to be able to travel successfully. And, 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 and so, it is not a question. And, and then we are always reacting that are, rather than being proactive. You say some of the indigenous volunteers information to Boko Haram members. If you, the boy, one of the boys that was interviewed by one of your former staff here said that they asked him, are they members of Boko Haram? He said they said they are, but he does not think. That's a small boy talking. He does not think they are Boko Haram members. What it means is that they are like kidnappers. For or, ransom. Uh, it's a kidnappers for ransom. And so it is not just Boko Haram now. We are just deal we are dealing with even ordinary miscreants. Right. Right. Like so qu quickly, uh, um, uh, please permit me, on the NSAS issue. Okay. The, we have been also dilly dallying on, oh, nobody died. Somebody, Somebody died. died. And now, a senior advocate, I think it was Femi Fallon also, is saying that about 70 people died and their bodies unclaimed. So, who took the bodies to this place in the first place? That's the question we should be asking. Were they the ones that were killed in the police station or the ones that were killed on the street or taken away or the ones that were killed at um, Lekki Togi? We need to understand all of this. And until government and stakeholders come clean, on this NSAS issue. What we have just done is to, you know, open uh, a keg of gunpowder, put fire inside and then cover it because it will explode someday. All right, um, if you could just speak quickly on the gang raping and filming of the Ogun 19 year old girl. It's, it's, it's something that seems to be, you know, very, growing. very sad and unfortunate. But like I said, in a state of lawlessness, 
it becomes illegal to be law abiding. When kidnapping for ransom becomes the order of the day and people who commit crime are compensated with um, uh, amnesty, what are you encouraging those who have the capacity to commit such crime but are not yet committing the crime to do? What they are telling them is that criminality pays. Right. But if every action there is a consequence yes. by the states, nobody will try this. Everybody right. will be protected. They will know that what they are doing is, is an offense, right. punishable, seriously, We're, and frown at. We have just three minutes mm. left, so um, I'm not I sure if we have a... Quickly look at The Guardian. I don't okay. know if there is um, something. There's a couple of them on The Guardian. Uh, like We can just throw out um, the major one that is talking about airlines. Uh, it says confusion as airlines, ration capacity and routes. It also says here, yeah, passengers groan, declare fair hike and poor treatment. Operators blame poor weather, infrastructure at airports. Flight tickets now is, are, are insane if, if oh. you've tried to fly lately. Um, also on The Guardian, again, Katsina students abducted and rescued. Army and police confirm incidents, say we freed 84 victims, recovered four cows. I'm not sure why cows um, are making the headlines, but... NJC recommends disengagement of Yobe and Oshun judges. Federal government traps for multiple sources. Affordable, effective COVID-19 vaccines. And also four killed in fresh Zagun Kataf attacks. And um, Ayim Pius Ayim, I believe, uh, is uh, in the news saying he will must lobby for 2023 presidency. Um, we may not have time. We can just pick one story and uh, quickly yeah, share. Quickly, um Confusion as airline ration capacity and, and routes. I was at the airport recently. I took photographs and I, you know, tweeted and I said, look, the airport is a madhouse. You, you, we, we know that our roads are not good. They are not motorable. Except maybe we are looking at the train that we, you know, put in place recently as, you know, the alternative to this airline. We also know that during the Utah period, like this, a lot of people would travel, considering also the fact that the, uh, recently with the NSAS, the roads became very unsafe, especially given the prison break and the rest. One would have expected that the government, in collaboration with the stakeholders in the aviation industry, would sit down and you know, find a way to ease the burden on the people, preempt this kind of surge. But no, the next thing we had was, you know, there was a hike in uh, airfare. Abuja, Lagos Abuja return ticket now. Sometimes you can, economy, it will cost you as much as 170,000 naira. Yes. And, and, and so, you ask yourself, so what's the essence of government? So when people say Nigeria is a failed country, not failing, you begin to quarrel. It's like, as if you hate Buhari, you hate Buhari. This has nothing to do with Buhari. It's about capacity. The government has shown consistently that they do not have the capacity. Because you had from January to December, as from June, also let's say because of lockdown and NSAS. So there was no enough time to brainstorm or think about this. They've been holding Zoom meetings and the webinars. Yes. As at this August, October, November, what step did we put in place to ensure that you know, when this happens, we'll be able to manage it. If you get to some of the airline uh, decks, you'll be wondering, now, because of COVID-19, the staffs, you have fewer hands doing the job of, you know, more people. And so you have more passengers. And we're talking about lockdown. We're talking about uh, second wave. Go to the airports. You would you will marvel. Okay. No face masks. We're, we're, because people just hang their face masks <laughs> and they are frustrated. We're out of we're out of time for this, you know. And I wish you know these are conversations that I honestly wish you know we would have you know a whole hour to talk about. Yes, yeah, so um, we will get to at least have yes. some time to talk about some of the issues that was captured on the papers this morning, the 2023 elections. Yes. We're also going to be talking about uh, dysfunctional refineries. We'll be talking about kidnapping for ransom. And uh, with the help of our guests, maybe you get some perspective and a better understanding of what's going on.
across the country. In the absence of truth, there will always be confusion. If uh, the government, you know, is not being honest, if Governor Masari or whichever other governor is not being honest, if the army is not being honest, there will always, be con you know, continue to be this confusion across the country on figures, on details, on who rescued who, on who, you know, was rescued or not rescued, um, on, you know, whether it was bandits or it was armed robbers or it was kidnappers or it was terrorists. Um, but we'll continue this conversation. Coming up next, we have Today in History. Yes, indeed. We do have today in history. We'll be talking about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And we'll also be talking about puzzle. What puzzle? I used to love doing that as a kid more when we return. <laughs> 